Hello guys, welcome to Tax Riders. In this video, we want to see how we can build Paraview from the source codes, which is very beneficial for certain applications. Let's go for it. So in the Setup Your Environment series, we explored how to install Paraview and, you know, generally speaking, the easiest way to install it is via the binaries that uh, the kit where the company or the initiative behind Paraview provides. So for example, I go to the download page of Paraview. Oh cool, I see that a new version is available, 5.12, uh, which is still in a re release candidate stage. But yeah, so generally we select the version that we want to download and then depending on a platform that we can select from here, we can download the binaries that are already compiled. But in certain applications, as I said, uh, you may need to install Parview from the source codes. You know, one of the circumstances that you may need it is when you want to customize the build, you want to change something, or you are a developer has added already something to the source code and you want to see the, the build and uh, the effect of the changes that you have made. But also another thing that you know we will explore in another video is when you want to install a plugin. So Parview comes with a lot of plugins and uh, pre-installs. When you install it, previously we use a couple of plugins, for example, NVIDIA Index in, uh, we, that allowed us to, you know, perform some volume rendering and in some cases you can uh, you know you may see some uh, you know plugins by some uh, random developers over the internet you want to compile them and in these kind of cases um, you need some build files from Paraview and it is not possible to build those plugins using these binaries. As a result we need to uh, build Paraview from the source code and the source codes of, of Paraview are available on GitLab this is where the development of uh, uh, Paraview takes place. It's, it's redirected to gitlab.gitware.com. Uh, GitLab and yeah, this is the source code. And uh, then the in, uh, kind of building from uh, building the source code and producing desired binaries is quite simple. Although it may seem a bit complicated in the beginning, I would say that this is really one of the simplest, uh, you know, build process that you may uh, ever see and in comparison to the size of the platform in this case Paraview itself it is very very simple so the instruction of building is provided here and um, let's see uh, yeah getting started compilation guide this is a readme of the, uh, the Paraview um, repository on GitLab and then here is a very detailed uh, instruction, but at the core, um, you know, we need to install some dependencies depending on uh, the distribution that we have or the operating system first. You can see that there are different sections for Linux, Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. I assume that we have uh, Linux here uh, as I have. Uh, and then um, my distribution is Ubuntu 2020. So I need to install this prerequisite and depending on a distro, you may need to install other stuff. And a good thing about Paraview is that it comes with CMake. So the default build process is based on the build system generator CMake. We had dedicated videos on CMake uh, before. And this is a new thing that we never covered in Tox Riders. The build system is not make but is Ninja. And Ninja is actually a very, very nice build system in comparison to Make, especially. And it is very nicely optimized for software of this size that when it comes to Paraview, then Make can have some problems, but Ninja is really optimized for size. When the size of the project increases, it's a very, very efficient build system. So we run Paraview and then it has, uh, you know, with a generator of Ninja, you know, if you don't know the concepts of generator, you may check out the videos we had already on CMake. And then with some parameters that we specify here uh, to, to, to configure Paraview, and then we make it. So uh, let's uh, start um, very simply. So uh, for that, I create a new directory in my desktop. I call it Paraview. And uh, yeah, I go 
to that directory and to be just to be sure that you know nothing goes wrong i will uh, deactivate uh, my conda environment which is uh, you know if you don't have conda as you can see now conda is de deactivated if you don't have conda you don't need to uh, worry about this step so now I am inside this directory. The first step is to uh, install the prerequisite. I think I have them already, but just to be sure, I run it. It asks for the super user and yeah, I have all the prerequisites and prerequisites are actually the QT and build essentials and also Ninja itself. So uh, these are things, and also open MPI. The, these are really essential stuff for you know parallelization. And another actually uh, circumstance in which you want to build Paraview from source code is that you want to change the uh, uh, parallelization scheme, let's say. And Intel TBB is also for uh, multi-thread programming inside a single machine or single node. And the rest there, as you can see, Qt. Uh, libraries and also uh, some uh, graphical uh, backend requirements. So now after installing on your requirements, it's time to go, you know, I scroll down and uh, it's time to run these, uh, these commands. So the first thing is to grab the repository. So install the desired directory, which is in this case Paraview uh, folder that I created on my desktop. I uh, clone the repository recursively in order to get all the in internal repositories as well. And as you can see, it's a really huge uh, repo. So we wait for it to finish and then uh, continue to the next step which is just going inside uh, the Paraview directory and then uh, yeah the, here it, it makes it uh, you know in the parent directory we can also do that which is fine and then we go inside that and we run CMake on the parent folder and Paraview inside of that so this folder that is now we are referring to CMA command is generated via this uh, you know git clone command let's say so yeah we wait a bit and then we continue okay so now the recursive cloning is over and uh, as you can see here it was quite extensive uh, and has cloned various sub modules or let's say uh, sub repositories including the vtk itself which is actually the framework behind uh, paraview and uh, also a couple of others and uh, yeah in the end they are all uh, cloned here and uh, yeah let's see what we have inside as you can see the repository is cloned and just to check this file size i can also check it with du command and yeah it's uh, almost one gigabyte of uh, source files only so now we are uh, we can continue to the uh, the build process and um, as you can see here, it also says that you can go inside the directory and check out a specific version. In this case, that's fine. We just want to build the latest version and uh, that's, uh, that's totally fine. And it can be interesting to see if it is RC1 or um, RC1 of version 12 or version 11, which both uh, should be fine, you know. So now we install, uh, sorry, we make the directory preview build and then we go inside it. And now we, we are ready to run the CMake command, you know, from uh, the parent directory in Paraview, because that's where uh, we have uh, the CMake file, just to explore it a bit via this uh, user interface. You can see that we here we have CMake list, which is a file that CMake needs to uh, generate the build system. And while we are inside the Paraview build, we should go one directory up and then we say Paraview. And then here, uh, you know, there are a bunch of different parameters that we can specify. Here are the recommended versions. As you can see that Paraview uses Python and the Paraview uses MPI and also uh, some other stuff. Uh, but... Uh, if you screw down a bit, you know, you can see that uh, after the 
uh, explanation for different uh, dependencies and also different platforms. There is a section that says these are the build options. You can see there are a bunch of them. You can, for example, uh, disable enable examples that is by default off. And then uh, WTK testing or build the tests and all these things, you know, these are really like the customization uh, part that you can uh, perform and yeah it's it's quite extensive but we just go for the ones that are uh, there recommended so just these four or five uh, parameters that are configured so I copy this and then uh, I paste it here and you know for the rest as I said and uh, this build type is also very important sometimes especially for the plugin application that I mentioned you may need to build it in a debug stage to debug the plugin but in this case uh, that is fine you know we just go for the release and now CMEX starts to check the system and as we said I think I forgot something here there was the build uh, yeah I, I didn't copy the generator so I just uh, stop it and then now we have some stuff here I remove everything that is uh, you know I uh, now it builds by default the you know, the generator will be for uh, GNU make. But what I want to have is actually for the Ninja build system. You know, GNU make also works here. It's not a problem. But as I said, it's slower. Ninja can be far, far faster. So now it runs and it configures for the Ninja. As you can see, all the prerequisites are installed on my system. And... Uh, it should be successful in the end. Let's see. It's, uh, you know, there, it's there, as, a, you know, we clone the repository recursively. So in this case, uh, it is actually checking the requirements of uh, different sub modules. And that's why you can see that it actually goes and checks things that are uh, repeated here. And after it's done, we should be able to run Ninja command to start the build process. And Ninja automatically runs, um, you know, the build process in parallel mode. And, uh, in, you know, it's not like make that we need to specify the number of cores. It automatically uses the cores that I have on the system. So it just needs to run Ninja after it is done. So now you can see that it says build uh, files are written here. So I just need to run Ninja and the build process starts. It's very cool. You can see it's very fast and it needs to build according to the, you know, according to the configuration that I made for the parameters that I specified here, it needs to build around 21,000 files. So um, I wait for it to finish and then uh, we continue. Okay, now the build is over. Uh, it was quite long and for me on a system with 12 cores, it took uh, more or less like one hour. And during the build, you know, it produces a lot of warnings. These are not errors, these are just warnings. So don't worry if you face the same stuff. So you can see that you know, a lot of error messages, uh, sorry, uh, warning uh, messages uh, have appeared here. Uh, so yeah. But in the end, uh, it is successful. So let's see what we have here. And uh, as you can see, we have also a bin directory. So we can go to that directory. And now we should have the Paraview binary that is um, compiled, that is built for us. And we should be able to run it with this command. So let's see. If it runs, if everything is correct, and as you can see, this is uh, actually the release candidate, so the very recent version of Paraview, version 5.12, uh, that is uh, like uh, you know the binary version that you download from the Paraview website. And uh, yeah, let's just create a simple source to be sure that it works with everything, and yeah. It's quite nice, as you can see, and uh, there is no issue.
So yeah, uh, this is the way that you can uh, build Paraview. And just to be sure, uh, I'll also show it here to you. So this is the search code. This is the binary. This is the build folder. And this uh, this directory is actually what we need later to pass to, for example, the plugin build uh, process that you will see in the next video. And uh, as I said, inside the bin directory, inside the binary, uh, binary directory, you can see that we have all the uh, VTK uh, libraries, uh, VTK Python, uh, Python server of Paraview, that is PV Python, Py uh, Paraview server, and also Paraview uh, binary with the configuration file. So um, yeah, this is the way that you can uh, build Paraview from the source code. As I said, it's quite simple. You can also go through the rest of the configuration and try it out, you know, to see, uh, you know, to make it more lightweight in case you don't need any specific functionality. I hope you find this video useful. See you next video. Bye.